Welcome to Cast Tutorials, and this is where we left off in the previous video. And welcome back to Python for Beginners. Now, we want to talk about different types of operators now. So we have been talking about a few operators. And in this video, I want to talk about comparison. The previous video, I didn't spell this right even. So comparison, okay. Now, you'd ask, why would I want to compare and what am I exactly comparing? So you'd want to compare variables, values, and stuff like that. So you can have x equals 5, y equals 3. Okay, I see that x is 5 and y is 3. Why would I want to compare? I know that y, which is 3, is less than 5. Why would I need that? And the answer for that is um, there are certain procedures that you have to execute after testing for conditions. So these comparisons or the comparison operators are useful when you want to check for something. It's not always advisable that you do this by yourself or you do it manually. So it's not advisable. Or during your program execution, now your code should be able to check if everything is still in order. So it can do that. One way that it can do that is to compare the values and also, these won't always be simple numbers, or they won't always be clearly stated like this. So you can perform a bunch of calculations, and after the calculations, you don't know what the values of these are. Now, instead of saying, hey, I see that that is less than that, or that is equal to that, you, you don't know at that point because you're not quite sure what your program did. So now what you do is you then apply your comparisons. So let's talk about these comparisons. And the first comparison, and before I even talk about these comparisons, what you have to know about the comparisons in, in programming languages and in Python as well, is that they are questions anyway. You're asking, is this equal to this? So let's talk about the first one, which is equality. So equality, and it looks like this. It has two equal signs. If it had one equal sign, Remember in the previous video, we talked about assignment. It would just say that you are assigning the value. So we don't want to assign the value. If we have x equals 5 and y equals 3, if we say x equals y and we, we print either x or y or both of them, if we want, so let's print both of them and see their values. They should now have the same values because we we've assigned x to the value of y. So print x give us 3, print y give us 3 as well, because x and y now have the same value because of that. But if we switch this up, or if we now use this equality operator, which is a comparison operator, this will return a Boolean. If you go back to the video where we talked about variables, Booleans are either true or false. So all of these comparison operators will now return to us or they'll give us a boolean, which is true or false. So that is why I said these comparison operators are like questions. We are asking ourselves, is x equal to y? Let's find out. If we print that, it says false. That is not true. What if we change y to 5 as well? Now we can see that these are equal. So let's, fingers crossed, let's hope that the program says that as well. And it does. So is x equal to y? In this case, both of them are 5, and that is true. So that is the first comparison operator. Let's move on to the next one. And the next one is not equal. Now, this one is a bit tricky because, and this is what it looks like. So it's an exclamation mark with the equal sign. It's tricky in the sense that if you swap the logic, you might end up with a result that you did not want. The question is, is x not equal to y? Well, it is, but what is the result that you expect? Let's look at this. It's false. Wait, we just said, is x not equal to y? We know that x and y are equal. But this operation is basically saying that this is false. So what does that mean exactly? Didn't you expect to get a, a true answer to say x not equal y is false or it's true? What did you expect? So that, that is totally up to you. But the point of this is that the equality says that 
is x equal to y, we know that is true. Now we're saying is x not equal to y? Well, it is equal to y, so it's not not equal to y. <laughs> so that is where the confusion can come in, right? So if we say that these two are 5 and 3, now look at what happens here. Now the result is true. Okay? So is x not equal to y? Yes, it's true. They're not equal. x is 5, y is 3. But if they're equal, this will return false because they are equal. Right? So I hope you can wrap your mind around that. Or you could just uh, go back a bit to try and get what is happening here. But the summary of it is if the numbers are not equal, this will return true. If the numbers are equal, then it will return false. So now let's move on to the next one, which is greater than. So greater than. And it looks just like the mathematical one. So the question is, is x greater than y? So x is 5, y is 3. So yes, the uh, x is greater than y. And that is why we get the true as our answer. And as expected, less 1. The next one is less than and that would be that over there. Just flip that around. And I remember, I used to swap these around in primary school. That is funny. So now we have that. So x is x less than y. And the answer is false because 5 is not less than 3. The next comparison operator that I want to talk about is greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to. And this will return true if the value is greater than or equal to. So if this is five, then one of them is true, which is the equality. It's not It's not greater. So x is not greater than y, but they're equal. So both of these are checked. So if one of them is true, then the result should be true as well for the, for the condition. That is why we have true over there. But what if y is a value that is greater, let's say 10, then it will also return true because there's also the greater than part of this. So these two things don't have to hold at the same time. They can't hold at the same time, basically. You can't have a number which is greater than and equal to the a number at the same time, right? You can't have that at the same time. So only one of these has to hold for this to return true. In this case, we have the greater than condition. So that is why we expect uh, to have this. So let's see. It should have been the other way around, if you look at that. So is x greater or equal to y? So now x is greater than y, so we expect that to return true. And when these two are equal as well, we expect the result to also be true. So if you have a less than or equal to, then we're going to have that in the opposite direction. We're just going to have this like that, greater than or equal to, and now we have less than or equal to. So this is the condition that we now have. And once again, we don't expect these two to hold at the same time. We expect one of them to hold. So let's say x is 3 now. So x is indeed less than y, which is 5. And if I run that, it's true. Also, we can test for equality. So if both of them are equal, then that is what we expect to have as well. But if we have this in the other way, so let's say this is 1. So now y, um, OK, let's set y to 1, and then this may be to 10. So now in this case, Here's what we have. The x is now greater than y, so that is false. And the x is not equal to y, so we expect an answer to be false. So this is all in this video. I just wanted to cover comparison operators, why they're useful, and how you can actually use them, and the expected results when you use them. So I hope you like this video. If you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.